Hi, welcome along to the All Guns Blazing podcast with my man DT. Um, listen, what have you been doing? What have you been up to, man? I mean... Oh, I've been turning into a mini Robbie <laughs> with uh, looking at players that we might be signing in the summer. It's like DT Daily type thing. It's just, no, you know what it is? Because like... Obviously, when you get these international breaks, and obviously we boring, it's even longer because we ain't had no match in the FA Cup and everything yeah. else. Um, so you kind of do Q and As and all this kind of stuff. But I sat there and thought, you know what? We're linked with so many players, and obviously I watch your show when the uh, windows are open and stuff. And your show is based on who's rumored to join the club. It could be the most mm. ridiculous suggestion ever, or it could have some truth to it. So what I thought I'd do is I'd look at the key areas that we're focusing on that we need to strengthen in the summer and who is a realistic target. Now, I could easily do a video. And what I'm doing is is that I'm focusing on one player per day. Mm. So I don't talk about loads and it all gets kind of muddled up. I'm talking about a specific player, what their comparisons are to the players that might be in their position now at the club, what it might mean for someone at the club. Um you I see it centre back wise. I see we're getting linked a lot with Costas Manolas at the moment. Yeah, he's who, one who um, they're saying that Roma would let go for a pretty. Yeah, you know, well, I, I think, think he's got a release he's clause got of thirty million pound. Yeah, and teaming him up on Socrates. Yeah, I like the sound of that. I know what I you say. Like I know what you're saying. That. I just feel that we need a different balance to Socrates. One of the players that I mentioned on yesterday's uh, one, which was episode two, was um, Upper Makana. Mm. at Leipzig and I feel he is yeah. perfect for the guy the, the, what I compare it to would be you remember when we had Sol Campbell and Colo Torre and the Invincibles mm. you had Sol Campbell which was very much a Socrates player the big guy the mm. you know that does all the ugly kind of stuff and then you had Colo Torre which was more of the athletic carries the ball out does a little bit more mm. cultured stuff shall we say and I feel that that's what we need to counterbalance. Hmm. So I just feel that Manolas is a little bit. I don't know, man. I like that, man. I like that. I, Greek, I do like. I like I do that like Greek him. partnership, man. The, the but anyway, all the transfer things <laughs> they ain't that far away because you know, know. the season. Know. The season has. Hi got... and welcome to Transfer <laughs> Daily, the show. Oh, I can't the wait. The season for that again. got long to go, and what I was going to focus on today on today's podcast was the running. Yeah. From now till the end of the season. Just before I get into that, just to let everybody know that um, obviously Arsenal are playing over in Dubai. Yeah, they're playing a game on Tuesday. They're going over there for warm Who weather against? training. Oh, I can't listen. Don't <laughs> ask me to pronounce the <laughs> name of that team, <laughs> right? But they're playing against uh, a team from Dubai. <laughs> right? <laughs> We've actually right? played them before. Yeah, I think it was, it was 70, 70, 71 or something, something like, like that. Yeah. yeah, I saw a picture of, of it the other day and. Uh, we're playing against them, opening this new stadium over there. They're yeah. already there for warm weather training. Not all the Arsenal players are going to be there because some are on international duty, yeah, but there's still going to be like Urza will be there, Lacazette, that, people like that. That so, name alone, that yeah, is yeah. a big draw. When yeah. you think of all the yeah. fans that are based in Dubai that will never get to see yeah. Arsenal. Yeah. Mesut and Urza. AFTV are going to be there. We're going to be there as well. We'll be doing interviews after the game, before the game. We're going to be doing some stuff around Dubai. And we're doing a Q&A. We're doing it. Um, at the the penthouse at the Five Hotel in Palm Jumeirah. That's on Sunday at six o'clock. Now, thank you very much to the guys um, from um, the Palm Penthouse at the Five Hotel. Um, sorry, from the penthouse at the Five Hotel in Palm Jumeirah. Um, I've seen some pictures at the hotel, man. Penthouse. Woo! Oh, it man. is beautiful, man. What he's not it actually telling absolutely you. absolutely beautiful. He just bought it. I, yeah. I wish I could buy that, man. I wish I could buy that. This would be expensive enough to, to probably spend the night. But actually, no, you know what? The prices ain't even that bad. When no, you look I know. At it. I yeah, know. I've got to say, I'm it's a of, beautiful, um, beautiful hotel. Dubai. I did um, watch your show with Troops the other day. And anyone watching that will have thought that Troops has never been on holiday in his life. He probably hasn't. He's, uh, <laughs> he's been Jamaica. He, we know he's been to Jamaica, but it's like... I watched his reaction when he, you were finally announcing that everyone's going out there. And it was kind of like, it was like a little kid. Like, <laughs> he's going on his first ever excursion. I'll tell you what, though. If you see the pictures of the hotel, it's nice. So we're going to be doing a Q&A there in the penthouse, 6 p.m. So if you're a Gooner, you're an Arsenal fan over there in Dubai, um, you're, you're visiting for the game, 
Uh, we're going to be talking all things Arsenal, right? So get along to that. It's going to be really, really good, right? So get yeah. along to that. We're going to have a load of fun with that event. So make sure you get over for that event. But listen, we're going to we're going to get into the running, right? Now yeah. this is really, really interesting. Um, uh, the running, oh, right? And the way in which things have started to work out because of what's happened with Tottenham Hotspur slipping up, because what's happened, Manchester United have slipped up. Arsenal have a really, really good chance <laughs> of getting into the top four. And for me, I know winning the Europa League would be amazing and that's just become more difficult now that we've drawn Napoli. Whether mm. we feel that we're good enough to beat them or not, it's going to be a tough game over those two legs. Napoli are a very good team, right? Mm. But probably now, a couple of weeks ago, you said, oh, probably our easiest route. None of them are easy, but the easiest route would be to try and do it through the Europa League. Possibly now it's gone back to maybe getting there in the league. We're a point behind yeah. Spurs, who are in third place. Um, and when you look at Arsenal's running, it it's is sick. quite a favourable running. It is. We do not have to play any of the teams in the top six. No, no. Don't right? Know. We've played all of them already. We don't have to, and we've done quite well against, apart from, you know, City, they, they, no they, 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 they done us, um, and, you know, over the two games, Liverpool draw, lost one, won pretty comprehensively, but everybody else in that top six, we've done all right against. I mean, like, Man United, four points off of them, Tottenham, four points off of them, three points off of Chelsea, could have been more. Yeah, if we'd have, have taken more. our chances in that game. Yeah. So we deserve to be where we are right now. Yeah. You've got to say. And then Definitely. I start to look at the running. And I want to run for this running with you mm. and see what you think about if it's a game we can win, what you think the outcome could be, how difficult you think each game is going to be. And yeah. then I'm going to run through some of the other teams' runnings as well yeah. to sort of gauge what, what you think got. those... Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Listen, we... I know everybody's looking at it and saying, oh, so at the moment, when you look on it, we've got the easier running. There's still some difficult places to go yeah, to. Really tough let's places. have it right. You know what I mean? And also, let's remember that our away form is not great. It's not great. And it hasn't been great this season. And of the remaining games, um, eight remaining games, five of those, oh, right. five are away. Yeah. So we've got to get our act together away from home. Big time. Or forget it. Yep. Right? So let's run through them. Okay. After the international break, on a Monday night, after everybody's played that weekend, which yeah. again is interesting because we could really have a chance to, you know, hammer home a, a great result. Yeah. Newcastle at home yes. at the Emirates, a team we've got a great record against yeah. at home. Surely. I'm, I'm going for three wins at home. The three home games we've got left, I'm going for right, but let's wins. run through them individually. Yeah, I'm just New, so Newcastle. You think? Yeah, I think we will. I mean, they respect. have been. I know they're picking up right. recently. I know. You know, I mean, they've been getting little last minute draws. They got that last minute draw against Bournemouth. They got that um, win. Um, but we are very uh, good at home. Yeah, at Newcastle. home we're strong. We've only lost. We've only lost. What the thing is as well though, drawing a game at this stage is like it's a loss. Like a loss, yeah. So it is, but it's massive because we will know by Monday what the rest of the results are. Mm. Now, if results go a certain way, one in particular, which is Liverpool at home to Tottenham, mm. we could be going into that game knowing that a victory has taken us to third. Not fourth, mm. third. And above Spurs. The incentive's there. Massive, massive. The week after that, now this is where they start to get more tricky. Yeah. Um, the 7th of April, away to Everton. Now, Everton, you know what? Up until recently, I wouldn't have said that tough because they ain't been that great at home, have they? They're, but a bit, they're a bit of a mixed bag. They can play really poor at home one week and then they can play like they did in the second half against Chelsea. Yeah. Which is dangerous. Yeah, they beat Chelsea 2-0. Um, they got a draw, drew 0-0 with Liverpool. Both of those games, though, when you look at them, Right, both of those games, Liverpool, if they'd have taken their chances, mm -hmm. they would have won. Even the Chelsea one, even though we was all in laughing the first at Chelsea, half, Chelsea yeah. did have a lot of chances. Chelsea were all over them, yeah. didn't take their chances, and then Everton came out and scored those two goals. But now Everton uh, with those with those results behind them, with the draw against Liverpool and the win 
you know, over Chelsea. They're going to be so confident now. They are. They? And it also depends what Everton's next result is as well. Mm. Because if they lose their next game, I don't know who they're playing, but if they lose, then that puts the pressure back on the manager already because he is under so much pressure at the moment. Mm. Um, so you've got to look at that result. You kind of got to hope for a defeat so that it kind of knocks them back down again. Mm. Um, our recent record at Everton's really good. I think we scored five there last year. Yep. Yeah, we did. Um, so we've got nothing to fear in going and, there. And it would be good as a confidence thing to, oh, massively. to, to, massively. to go to somewhere like Everton as a, you know, and get an away win. It's the week after, I think, yeah. that it's going to be a tough one. Right, week after, Watford away. Yeah. Watford have been playing really, really well this season. Yes. Um, you know, we, we know what Watford are like at home. Troy Deeney, yeah. you know, they're very physical. They're, they're, but they're a good side. They're a good they're side. They're a good side. You know what I mean? Um, you know, they're one of, you could say they're the best of the rest, really, mm. at the moment. Them and Wolves, isn't it? So yeah. that's going to be a tough game. But uh, again, it's, a result. it's winnable, isn't it? it? Is. It's not like going to, you know, when people say to me, yeah, but these are tough, tough, tough away games. It's tough. Yeah. But it's not like going to Anfield. It's not like going to the Etihad. No, no. It's not like going to Old Trafford. And you know what I mean? They're up for this game because of. Um, a certain someone as well. Troy, cheers for that. Um, I spoke to him last night and I was actually saying to him about the um, the fixtures that are coming up. And I said, because they're playing the semi-final yeah. the week before they play us. Mm. So I'm hoping that they beat Wolves and their head will then be on a cup final. Yeah, I know it's down the line, but... You've seen I mean, it. that will help us because that will take a lot out of them. Yeah. You know, whichever physically. way it goes, it's a Wembley game. Yeah. You know, physically and mentally, it's they're going to be looking to put absolutely everything into that yeah. game. So that, that could... And if they lose... That could work to well, advantage. If they lose as well, they could be down in the dumps because yeah. they reached the semi-final a few years ago mm. um, from beating us in the quarter-final, actually, yeah. and they lost to Crystal Palace in the semi-final. And if you look at their results after that, it kind of affected them. Yeah. So... It can it, it can affect it you. It can affect you even when you win. It can because you win and, then and your, like your, your your mind is focused upon. You, we've seen that with Arsenal. Yeah, your mind's focused upon the FA Cup final yeah. and everything else in between well, doesn't really. You the know. way they look at it is that if Watford get to the FA Cup final, it's been a great season. Then they're safe in the Premier League. They could yeah. lose the remaining games that they've got left in the Premier League. The remaining eight games, and mm. they still would not get relegated. So what Watford would be looking at is that if they get through to the final, they've got a massive chance of getting into Europe as well. Mm. And yes, the likelihood is that they're going to play Man City. But in look what Wigan done to them. Yeah, in a one-off game. Look what we did to them a couple of seasons ago in the semi-final. But Wigan two times in a yeah, row. Yeah, yeah. One-off games. Their own ground. And in the yeah. final, you yeah. never know. One-off games. Swansea should have beaten them. And <laughs> you know also, I mean? what you've got to take into consideration if Watford get to the final against Man City... Um, I know we're already dismissing Brighton already, but what if Man City are in the semi-finals of the um, or get into the Champions finals League. of the Champions League? Mm. Their mind, what what's going to be a priority to Man City? I know they've got a ridiculous mm. squad, but you saw what happened when we played Chelsea in the cup final. Mm. They'd already won the league, then their levels just dropped a little bit because they had a little break before they played us in the final. Whereas we were just kind of like, mm. let's do it. And it's really yeah. hard. It to might get have out an effect on Watford, so that that could have an effect on them. The week um, after that, on the twentieth of April, Crystal Palace at home, yep. another team that we've got a great record against at home. Palace are a good team on the road, though. They, they, they. I was chatting to one of their fans the other day. He says to me that basically they're better on the road than they're at home because they're a mm. counter-attacking team. They don't really want the ball much. They just want to hit you on the break. So they'll be dangerous. Uh, Batshuayi, Zaha, but definitely beatable, yeah, especially. Remember, this is going to be an Arsenal that knows there's a prize at the end of the... Because this is the other good thing about this season as well now. That normally when we come to this part of the season, none of these there's games nothing, really there's nothing there. matter. We're just playing for pride. But all of these games matter now. They mean something. To, to, to get into that top four. So Palace at home, you would expect Arsenal yeah. to get three points. As long, but as, then, uh, long as Zaha can stay on his feet. <laughs> then another tough game. Leicester away. Yeah. <clears throat> Leicester got a great defeat, a <clears throat> great victory over Burnley the other day. Ten men they were down you to. You said Burnley were going to win, didn't you? Right, I did, yeah. <laughs> right. I watched that. I remember <laughs> when, when Leicester scored that goal in the last minute, I actually pictured troops jumping around, oh, getting on WhatsApp going, 
I told you. Yeah, been, I told you about Leicester, been, did it, I? The guy's been insufferable all week, man. <laughs> but um, yeah, Leicester, Leicester away. Tough. Now that's going to be tough. tough. And and um, Brendan Rodgers in charge, and it, you can see already there's a lot of spirit there. Is They've that worked, uh, that's going to be a tough game? Is that Leicester's final home game of the season? I'm not sure, to be honest. Is I'm that the sure. second from last game? For probably the. I know there's a rearranged fixture with Wolves got to be fitted in there. No, there's two more weekends after that. So uh, I, 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 I was just thinking that if it was Leicester's, you know, final game at home. I'm picturing there would be some kind of big send off, a big celebration, maybe because obviously the owner, mm. you know, to yeah. put an end to what's been a horrible yeah. season for them, which could work in their favour because they'd be so mm. hyped up for it. They're going to be hyped up anyway. I know because they're also going to be coming there. These are they've got nothing really to play for, just big games new from manager. now till the end of the season. But they've got a new manager in. They want to win these games. Mm. That'll be tough. Lost there last year. Yeah. Um, we're down to 10 men. Got beaten. Mavropanos got beaten there last year. Yeah. Um, then Brighton at home, yeah. which <clears throat> that'll be our last home game on the 4th of May. Um, and again, our record against Brighton at home is excellent. Yeah. You know, you wouldn't expect us. That'd be an absolute shock if we didn't win that game. Mm -hmm. Right. Then Burnley away. That's the that's down as the last game of the season. Now, there yeah. is, like you said, the Wolves fixture to be rearranged. That hasn't been. That hasn't I think been. I have. Oh, they have rearranged it now. Yeah, I think my dad told me last night. Actually, he was saying something to me, and it's okay, a Wednesday let me, night. Let me just have a quick look. But yeah, Wolves away. I'm trying to think now again, is. as we've seen with Wolves against Manchester United the other day, and various teams, they are a very, very good side. Yeah. But they're again another one of them up and down teams that can be beaten. And but they final. seem to. They like what we're saying with yeah. Watford. They raise their game though. Yeah. They raise their game when it comes to to um, playing sides. the big sides. That game is actually on a Wednesday. So it's a Wednesday, yeah. seven forty five kickoff. That follows the Crystal Palace game, which is on the okay. Sunday. And what's it before? And that's a that's a real busy week. So and then the next game followed up by playing Leicester on the Monday. So that's three huge games. Um, I suppose that's not bad in the respect that we've got a bit of a gap from the Wednesday game now. We're to not the, playing Saturday or Sunday. We're not playing, playing Saturday, Sunday. We're playing the Monday. They're actually, the Monday where I was really having a go at these Monday games. But with the, that being slotted in for the Wednesday, that helps us a lot with, um, you know... Oh, the, hold on a minute. I actually saw on the Arsenal website, if we reach the semi-final of the Europa, the Leicester game's being moved to Sunday. Well, the, the semi-final of the Europa League... Yeah, because that will be on the 2nd yeah, of May. It actually says it on the website already. Yeah, that, yeah that's right. Um, in event, uh, there, There's two games. Yeah, it says in event moved. that we reach the Europa League semi-finals, um, the match will be rescheduled to Sunday, um, the 28th of April at 12 p.m. That's right. And there's also a game after we play Napoli away. Who's the league game after Napoli away? Is it, and, um, is it Everton or... No, it ain't. Is it, or is it Palace? We've got Napoli away and then we've got Watford. What? And at the moment, that's not showing it. It's just showing that's no, normal. There was an that's there was another Monday. game. There was another game where it's being moved. It's currently, I think it's the home game of Napoli, actually. Yeah. actually. Who are we playing on the Saturday after Napoli at home? Saturday after Napoli, Sunday after Napoli. And they moved um, it to Sunday yeah, it's now. a Sunday. We're playing Crystal Palace. Yeah, it, that was a Saturday. Yeah. So that's, that's been a, moved to the yeah. Sunday. And that's Leicester. a four o'clock four o'clock kickoff See, this on the was Sunday. The, the argument we had in last week's podcast about moving games and yeah. everything else. They can move that Leicester game if we're in the semi-final to a yeah. Sunday from a Monday. So yeah. why have they not moved the Watford game from a Monday because to a Sunday? Because they don't want to help us. They don't want to help us. I mean, it's just, but it just shows. It just goes to show. That they can help you yeah. when it suits them. And then, like, just going back to those fixtures. Um, so, the yeah, the last one will be, well, it, it will be away at Burnley. Okay. That's going to be the last game. So we've and got uh, a possible away at Burnley is difficult. Points. Burnley could be fighting for their lives. Burnley we could score in the last minute at Burnley. <laughs> how many years have we got done a good it? record against Burnley? But Burnley could be fighting for their lives. They could be. But how many years have we done that now to Burnley? Last minute goals, even yep. at the Emirates. I think the last two visits to Burnley, there was the Koscielny yep. last kick, Alexis penalty last kick. Alexis' last kick at the Emirates. Mm. We seem to do it. Can you imagine mm. getting a last kick, last minute <laughs> penalty to get into the Champions League or finish above Spurs? But what's that? Eight games, 24 points to play for? So, I would out of those say, games... I would say we need 20 points out of 24 to finish third. 20, as much as 20? 
Because teams are going to drop points. I know they're going to drop points, but I'm what I'm looking at. What are we saying? I'm trying to get it up now. Is things just flipping just dis disappeared? Where so out of a where possible I had the twenty four points. I'm also going to say that we're going to be unbeaten in those eight games. You think? Yeah, we're only going to draw two away games. We're going to win six, draw two, twenty points. Wow, that's a big statement. Yep. With our away record. It's time for the players to stand up and be counted. It does. It is the only worry when I look at that running. My only big worry is the fact that the away record of Arsenal this season has not been great. However, there's been some mitigation in that in that a lot of the bad results away from home coincided with injuries. Lots and lots of injuries to yeah. players at Arsenal, um, particularly at the back. I just feel at the moment there's a lot of players kind of back now. Mm. A lot of players sort of... Fighting for places. Yeah, and hitting form. Yeah. Um, your own mate Xhaka has appeared, right? He's, he's finally appeared and he's been playing My really... Guy. He's been playing really, really well. He has all season. Right? Um, but I mean... Oh, there's been parts of the season where he's been very sloppy and he still has that in him. But then every player's had sloppy but, moments yeah, in the season. But he's been playing well. Am I um, right? Every player. Yeah, has yeah, they, yeah, they do. But he seems to always, as he's I said. He's always got to add that little extra. He's, because it's true. Even, you see this. It's true. To. The other day in the game against Renz, again, he just inexplicably gave the ball away nearly and Mustafi. The two do you know what I like to call it? I like to call it He's making it more interesting. <laughs> well, it's, oh, sorry, we don't want it interesting. <laughs> we don't want it interesting. You know what I mean? And even we, Ozil's starting to play. His work rate over the last couple of games has yeah, been phenomenal. Ozil, Ozil has been um, playing a lot better. Um, you've got guys like Mkhitaryan are playing really, really He's well. He's playing really well. Right? Um, Hitting form you know, just at the right time. Maybe that injury done him good. Yeah, Abamyang is scoring goals. You know, Lacazette scoring goals. So it's positive. The defence is playing better because Shelney. I think he's a guy that's gone under the radar mm. recent, in recent performances. It I looks, think... It looks like his old self. He has been excellent. Really has but been excellent. But you see excellent. why I say about this counterbalance with Socrates? Yeah. Because Koscielny is more of the cultured one, shall we say. Mm. And he's more... Bloody phone. Yeah, what are you I'll doing? Just, I've phone? been trying to find, like, I had all the stuff all lined up. And it's just all... Just now I'm not getting no... It's photographic. Oh. It's good. So the no, because I'm, I'm looking to move on to the other teams now. No, oh, you want that one up? <laughs> well, but no. If, if, if you're you... having trouble with the signal, then just buy the company, <laughs> and then you won't ever have to worry about it again. Let me try again here as you're talking. But um, yeah, I'm, th that's a good running. It is a good running, and you know, like we said, we've got the momentum right now. Um, players look like they're. Enjoying themselves. They're playing into a bit of form at the right time. Mm. There's competition for places. Um, I've got no doubt that Mkhitaryan and Awobi were a little bit gutted that they weren't starting against Renz in the second leg, for example. And that kind of showed when they came on the pitch that both of them made a difference mm. because they're trying to say, all right, Unai, don't drop me again. That's and what, that's and what, that's what we want. want. That's what we want. We want Unai to be sitting there scratching his head going, mm. oh, who do I play this week then? I don't know. What do I do? Even Ozil's giving him a selection headache. You know, yep. the fact that Torreira was on the bench shows just how well they've done against Manchester United. Mm. Guendouzi can't get in the team at the moment. It's great. When was the last time we had that kind of selection headache? Yeah. You could normally sit there and predict It's a confident team, isn't it? It's a confident it team. Is. And they can really... And Unai Emery, if he gets these guys up for it, and then maybe that warm weather training over in Dubai is part of that plan, right? In the come all guns blazing... Till the end, of, there you go. <laughs> like that. You like until, that. Until the end of the season, right? Let me run through like some of the other teams right now. Uh -huh. We're gonna go Tottenham now, and Tottenham have probably got the hardest running of all the teams left in, um, in in that top four. I remember battling it out for those two positions. Now is us, Tottenham, Chelsea, and Manchester United. This is Tottenham's running. Next up, Liverpool away. Liverpool going for the title as well. Remember, will not give any quarter in that game that's yeah. going to be really really tough and you've got to say Liverpool have only lost one game this season you've got to say Liverpool are the favourites to win that then Tottenham have got Crystal Palace at home now I think that's the first game in a new stadium yeah their third stadium right? of the season <laughs> how are they allowed to get away with that now 
I Again, think that's a farce. I was chatting to some I was chatting to some Tottenham fans um last night. I was at this kick it out event and um I was chatting to these Tottenham fans there. And I said to them, we were talking about them in their new stadium. I said, listen, I remember the Emirates, right? When we first moved in there. It was a bit shaky at first, remember? Mm. Every team that came there wanted to be, get that label as the first team to win at the new yeah, yeah, blah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. So they're going to get that. So Palace will give them a tough game. You'd expect Tottenham to beat Palace though. Yeah? Uh, at home, at yeah, home. Well, you given their form, it'd be very Spursy. To lose their first ever it'd be very game Spurs in their new lose, stadium, it'd be very Spursy to lose any of these. But I think when you look on it, it'd be brilliant. It'd their be first brilliant. First ever game in their new stadium, it'd be brilliant. But you'd have to fancy them to beat Palace, uh, right? Sure. At home, at home, I think so. But it's I, tough. I think so. They got a good right? record against Palace at home as well. Do you remember our first ever game in the Emirates, Aston Villa? Yeah. And it took a Gilberto scrape. Silva That's what I said. It's, it's, it's not easy. You've got to scrape, yeah. It ain't easy to do that. And so and I, and I remember, do you remember that all the Villa fans, that was what they was. They were like, we're going to be the first team to win at your stadium. Like, and you can imagine all the players are thinking that as well. Yeah. We're going to spoil this party. It's not easy. I remember it's a like London derby as well. So all of those fans, players, are going to be like, yeah, man. So yeah, Will, we're going to spoil that party. If you want to go dive in that game, <laughs> feel free. You know, Andros Townsend, maybe an old player coming back. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine that? An old ex Tottenham yeah. player comes back and scores the first ever goal That's and right. winning goal. Yeah. But I would now, expect them you know, to win that. Then they've got Man City away, right? On a Tuesday night, Man City. No, sorry, that's a Champions League game. Pardon me. But they have got but Man they've City got away. Those, they've got Man City away, a oh, difficult Champions League game before they go into a game that they're going to be pretty comfortable in. They've got Tottenham. Sorry, they got a Huddersfield. Yeah, out. Tottenham. <laughs> <laughs> they, they got themselves. Yeah, yeah but Tottenham. they got they, they got Huddersfield at home. Okay, that's a standard win. That nearly backed right? for you the other day as well. Then they have Man City. Yeah, Man City again. Right, this time away they have them. They have them in the second leg of the um, of the second leg of the um, Champions Champions League. League. I mean, What's the matter with you today? What's going wrong with me? Second leg of the Champions League. Right. Then the week after that, they got Man City again, right? So they got Man City again. Now I don't know if this Do you works. Know what's interesting? Hold on. Does this work against them or in wait, their favour? Wait, 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 Huddersfield is that away? No, home. Now they should win that game. All ends up. No, nah, they won't. But what I will say is, Come right? On, wait, wait, wait. What I'll say is, yeah, is that I watched Huddersfield against West Ham. Bar the last ten minutes when they completely capitulated. They played like a team. No Wait, chance. listen to me. They played no. like a team that know they're relegated. So let's just go out and have fun. Now, the reason why I say that game could be interesting is because it comes right in between the double header against Man yeah. City in the Champions League. Yeah, and, that, and, that so, will, and that will take a lot out of them. So Pochettino may rest a lot of players. Yeah. So it may kind of just mm. even it up a the little difficulty, bit more. The difficulty of having those Champions League fixtures, you know... In between these games, with their squad, makes it really difficult. And the fact, and so the fact that remember. they're playing Man City three times, three times over that period, yeah, makes it really difficult Man for them. Man City won't be an easy two legs. Yeah, and then they got Man City away on Saturday, the twentieth of April. Yeah. Um. Let's say they'd mo- let's let's just say they knocked Man City out of the Champions League, mm, right? No, but let's say they they had done. You know that Man City will be gunning for extreme revenge on that Saturday game when they play them again at twelve thirty. If Man City and on both of those games, Man City, if Man City knock them out, and then they got to play them again on the Saturday and it's at home. And remember, for Man City, all of these games, obviously the those games mean a lot, but even the other game with them means a lot because they're chasing the title as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's a really difficult for them. And then they got um. They then immediately after that on the Tuesday they got to play Brighton because that's a rearranged fixture because Brighton, of course, in are in the, the FA Cup. Cup. They're at home. You should expect them to win that, but you know Brighton, good defence. You know they'll they'll make it difficult. Then they've got on Saturday the twenty seventh of April their last game of the season, West Ham. Ooh. Right? No, no, no. Sorry, that can't be the last game. I think that's the game before that. But West Ham, that's gonna be really really tough. Because you know what, West Ham, they ain't, they're going to want to come and spoil the party. Yeah, and they don't like to. <clears throat> it's going to be a bit like when they played Chelsea that time. It is at home, though, so you'd expect them to win. But West Ham will be pumped Where for that, that game. At the Spurs That's at Spurs' stadium. 
And then the final game of this, the final two games, um, they got to go away to Bournemouth. It's not easy. Could be You'd tricky. expect them to win, but not easy. And then their last game of the season at home against Everton, I would expect them to win that game. What do you think? Hmm. So when you look at their fixtures, that is difficult. That is a hard, hard running for Tottenham Hotspur. And I was looking at everybody else's running, and I have to say they've got the most they've got the most difficult running of all the teams. No? I'm just working out in my head how many they're gonna get. I think eight games. I I'm think gonna say that they're gonna lose to Man City and Liverpool. Yep. So well, I think they lose to Man City, Liverpool, points. and then they could. There's possible slip ups there, and and I think the they're going to get 16 points out of 24. They're going to mm. out of the eight games, they're going to win five, draw one, lose two. It's a tough running for them, man. Really tough, and good for us. Really good for us. Yeah. Let's now take a look at um, Manchester United, right? Yeah. Who are currently have the fifth position. Manchester United, all of a sudden, the form's fallen off, right? With, uh, you know, the wheels are falling off, the form's falling off, they got that... Def- <laughs> Why <are> you lying? <laughs> but they had the, the, the defeat against... Um, <laughs> defeat against Wolves. <laughs> right? They had defeat against Wolves. And just before that, of course, um, they got beaten by us in the Premier League. Now, this is their running. Um, yeah. After the international break, Watford at home. Comfortable win, you'd expect for them. Yeah, you'd expect. You know, that. at home, you'd expect that th- <coughs> them to win that. Um, second of April in the league, they go to Wolves again away. Mm. Tough game. We're gonna know, we know that because it's gonna be tough. Then they've got straight after that, right? Um, the following week after that, then they get into Champions League action, where they're playing Barcelona. <laughs> you seen? I think Barcelona might win the Champions League. They're so good, right? But they've got Man- Manchester United, they've got them at home in the first leg. In between that, they play West Ham at home. West Ham always give them a lot of trouble. Uh, they should yeah. win. They're at home. Yeah. But that sandwich in between Barcelona. the two games against Barcelona, they then have to go away to Barcelona, yeah. right? And play a really, obviously, tough, wherever way, it's, unless they're winning about 4-0. And even then, still be tough in the second. To go to the new camp in the second leg is always yeah. tough. Well, you remember PSG right? won 4 0 in the first leg yeah, and exactly. went to the second at the exactly. new camp. Exactly. It's a difficult place to go to. Then on Sunday, the 21st of April, Everton away. Like, just like what we've got. But I think even tougher for them, early kickoff. And I know they've got a good record against Everton, but it's straight after Barcelona. playing Barcelona. That's tough. Which makes it tough. Right? Then. On the 24th of April, Man City at home. Tough, tough game. Be really crunch game. Could go any way. Yeah. United at home. It's a local derby. Anything it could be a t- City are going for the title. I mean, you wouldn't be surprised to see a draw, say, in that game yeah. or a defeat. Yeah. They could possibly win it, but it's going to be difficult. Then the week after that, the 28th of April, Chelsea at home. Again. Chelsea be going for the top four. Really tough game again. Two those games back to back. Look at those. Look at these. Uh, look at these four games in that sequence. Mm. Barcelona away. Everton away. Manchester City at home. Chelsea at home. That's mm. a tough city. Like when we was going into that yeah, tough yeah, sequence yeah. of games the other day. That's a tough sequence that of games. Mentally and physically and then, draining. Um, I think it's their final two The games last two that, games, if they're nice anywhere touches. near it, they've got a nice couple of games. They've got Huddersfield away, which you'd expect them to go there and win. Well, and they then, lost there last year. Yeah, and then they've got Cardiff um, oh, at home. Yeah, yeah, where, yeah. come on, man, you know. Uh, yeah. Um, I'm looking at that, and I'm thinking that they will get... It's a difficult running they've got, man. It's tough. I think they're going to lose at home to Man City. I genuinely do. Man City have got a decent enough record there. They've got a good record against the title. Um, I can see them dropping a few points in there. I think Wolves away as well. I think yeah, I think they might get done at Wolves again. But 
Uh, I'll go Man United get about 18 points out of 24. I feel they'll win six of them and they'll lose two. I think they'll okay. lose to Wolves and... I remember the and bit City. of the momentum's I gone. I beat Chelsea at home. Bit of their momentum's fallen off yeah, recently. I know. I know. Oli's um, got to go and get some spare yeah. wheels. Right. Now let's go Let's go and take a look at um, <laughs> Chelsea. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Chelsea, straight after the international break, Cardiff away. Yeah, Cardiff good. fighting for their lives, but... I don't think... You'd expect Chelsea to yeah. go. They're going to have too much for Cardiff, in my opinion. Um, then they've got Brighton at home. Should be able to win that. Standard win, I would have thought, yeah. for Chelsea. Then they've got West Ham at home. West Ham will come again. They will not want to give Chelsea anything. And they always do all right against Chelsea. Home games, aren't they? However, you'd expect Chelsea to get through that. Then they've got Sparta Prague. It's quite an easy game away mm -hmm. in the Europa League. It's fallen brilliantly for them. But then after that, Liverpool away. Tough game. Ooh. Tough game. Liverpool going for the league. You'd expect, in my books, I'd expect Liverpool to win that. Yeah. Then straight after that, they've got to go, um, then they've got to come back home and play Slavia Prague in their second leg. Again, I would have thought they'd probably be through already in that. Yeah, I mean, they're going to beat Slavia Prague. Then, um, Monday the 22nd of April, Burnley at home. They've got you'd a lot of home games, You'd they? expect them to win that. Standard win for them. Then they go away to Manchester United on the 28th of April. Yeah. That's going to be um, tough. You know, it could go either way. Both of them battling for the top four. And then their last two fixtures, um, Watford at home. You'd expect them to get through to that, especially if Watford are in the FA Cup final and got the FA Cup the next week. You saw them resting players yeah, against yeah, Man yeah. City before. And their final game of the season, Leicester away. However, Chelsea always seem to do well against Leicester away. Um, mm. They've got a very good record. Earlier, now I know that that's Leicester's last game. They might be doing some big send-off. Possibly, but send-off or no send-off if Chelsea need that to win the title. They've got right. a good record. They would not be... It, 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 they ain't going to be phased about going to Leicester. Not like we, where we yeah. say, oh, we've lost there quite a few times. 16 points as well. They're going to lose a couple of games. So you're uh, saying them 16... Uh, Which would mean them sixteen, Spurs sixteen, Man United eighteen. Which means Arsenal will finish third, Man United will finish fourth. No. Yeah. No, in your table then. No, Man United would possibly finish fifth. No. Yeah, because Spurs are on sixty-one points. You what, said they. You said now? you think they'll get sixteen. How many points are Man United behind? Man United have fifty-eight points, so they're 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 uh, four three points, points behind. Three points. Three points behind. Sorry. So and uh, Spurs have got a bit of goal difference. So going off what you're saying, your top four is then. Who do you think is going to win the league? Liverpool. So Liverpool top, Man City second. Arsenal third, you're going, and Tottenham fourth. Going off of what you said. I'm throw, looking. Throw another defeat in there for Spurs, man. Fuck them. I don't want them in there. <laughs> Put them in there. Do you somewhere. know what? I'm looking at going off of the games. If things go to order, I'd say, you know, Man City winning it, Liverpool second, in my opinion. But it could go either way. They're both great teams. Um, I think one, I think Arsenal are going to get third. It's going to be choppy, but they're going to get third. And then I think I think it's Man United going to get fourth. Man United or Chelsea? I do feel Tottenham, man. They've got a very difficult run in. The momentum is against them right now. You know, mm. they they're the hunted team. Everyone's caught them up. Any little defeat, they've got such a hard sequence. Listen, if they listen, if they were to pull it back and get into that top four, you'd have to say they've done well because they got some difficult games yeah. in that running man. Let me let me give you a scenario here, and I know there's a few little scenarios that might not seem so great, mm -hmm. but the banter we would get all summer would be hilarious, right? You know there's only five English teams allowed in the Champions League, yeah? Yeah. We finished <coughs> third. We guaranteed it, yeah? Mm. Spurs finished fourth. They've got that last place. Manchester United win the Champions League. I know that'd be painful, but hear me out. They win the Champions League. Spurs won't get it. Um, no, 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 because there's still only four teams, 
right? So they still get in. But then Chelsea win the Europa and get in the Champions League. There's your five. Who misses out? Tottenham mm. that finished fourth. Could also happen to us too. That's why I said we finished third. <laughs> so we got to make sure we finish third. Arsenal have got a great opportunity. We look at those. Look at the runnings. Man. Look at the runnings of all those teams that I've just named out. We have the easiest running. I'd say next easiest to me is Chelsea's. Closely followed by Man United, but by far the hardest oh, running is Spurs. Is Spurs. Yeah. Uh, and they're moving into that new stadium. And as I said, I just feel that when you move into that new stadium, everybody's like, they want that scalp. The team that won the first game in the new stadium. That's what I mean. So, yeah, they're going to have to deal with that. They're going to have to, you know, worry but about all of them. And do you know what? With all that, let's forget about them. Let's, about let's forget about Man United. Robbie, in let's our forget hands. about it's in our hands. It's, it's in, in our, our hands. hands. How good would it be? How good an achievement would it be for Unai Emery if he was to get into top four? Unreal. Absolutely massive. Huge. One of the biggest achievements of the season. Um, I was watching Claude and Ty's show, and I know that Claude was saying that it's not a big thing to celebrate or anything else. And I've got to respectfully disagree with what Claude says. And I feel that when you look at the bigger picture, if we were... Of course it's something. For me, if we were, if, if we were two, three, four years into Unai Emery's reign and all we're trying to achieve is top four, fine. Mm. It's, it's not an achievement. It's not nothing to celebrate. We're just going around in circles and doing the same thing that we were moaning about Arsene Wenger doing. But given the fact that it's his first year, taken over a man that's been there for 22 years, inherited players that he doesn't want, some of them, wasn't allowed to get his own players all in in one go, had an awful transfer budget, um, Sven Mislantat leaving, Ivan Gazidis leaving, the mm. backroom staff all changing, injuries. When you put all of that into the mix, yeah, see, well back out, well back out for the season, Bellerin, Bellerin out, out for, for the, the season, season, holding out, holding for out for the season, massive. Huge, huge, huge. He and would have accomplished an unbelievable season. Let's take the Europa mm. out of this. I'm not even, even without winning the Europa League, getting in the top four all day. And you know the thing I think about Unai Emery, right, is that he was brought in as a coach. And we've got to remember that word, coach. He's not the manager, he's the coach, coach. right? And coach basically, the players. yeah, coach the players, get the best out of them. And what I'm seeing at the moment is he's getting the best out of what he's got. Yeah, He really is getting the best. He's, he's, when I compare it to last year, he's getting the best out of Lacazette. Lacazette last year in some games was a shadow of what he is now. Yeah, right? massively. Right? Coming off, he's been substituted, looked really unhappy sometimes. That, look at the spirit in the team at the moment. Massive. He's getting the best out of Ozil. We know he's had tangles with Ozil, but over the last few games, he's got Ozil, like you said, tracking back, running, working hard. Working hard. Something we ain't really seen a exactly. lot. Right? He's getting the best out of Xhaka. He's getting the best out of Alex Iwobi. Mm. Right? We're starting to see a much better Mkhitaryan. He's getting the best out of Koscielny. Look definitely. how good Kolasinac's been in that. Kolasinac, she's getting the best out of Kolasinac. She's found... In, there's two players there, like he's found their positions. He's found a position for Kalasinac. He's found a position yeah, for Xhaka. He realizes I always used to say to you on these shows all the time. All the time on the show, I go to you, what is his, uh, what's his, tell me, what's his position? Now we're starting to see, you can see the what his position is. He's getting yeah. the best out of Maitland Niles. I've seen over the past couple of games, I'm like, yeah, Maitland Niles, continue playing like that. Hector Bellerin might not be able to get back in. That's mm. what you want. You want competition for places. Yeah, of course. Right? So I like what I see with this manager. I would love for him to get into the top four so he's got a bigger budget where he can go out there, mm. get some better players in, Definitely. get Arsenal back to where we want to be, playing in those big games. I am jealous I know. of I know. Tottenham. I am jealous of um, Man City, Liverpool, Man United, you know, those big games that they're playing against PSGs and things like that. You know, that's where we've been for all these years and that's where we want to get back to. It's been a nice little adventure, you know, um, in the Europa League, going out to all these various places. <laughs> that was up until now, until we got Napoli, right? Oh, yeah. But I was with a nice little adventure. But now we need to get back there. We need to be able to get the players in that we want. And if this manager, and I would, you know what? I'd love to win the Europa League, but I would, it's almost like the top four 
is almost like a trophy. <laughs> I'm trying to resist saying that. Like, no, it's, it's, it's not. It, it's not like a trophy. <laughs> but as an achievement-wise, massive achievement. Because I just man. The, the reason why I say it because I gauge the season. And to me, I'd like him to get the top four through that route in particular because you've shown then that throughout the season you're the in the top yeah. three, four teams. And if you look at it at the moment, right, no one's giving him any props, but he deserves that yeah, team. The Arsenal team deserves to be where it is because, as I said, they've taken four points off Tottenham. They've taken four points off, off Man United. United. They've taken three off Chelsea. Only the two teams above them have really been the teams that have put us to the sword yeah. this, this season. The and even The two sides that are walking away from yeah, them. Yeah, and Liverpool drew us at home, but they are, you can see those teams are way better. Get into the top four, then maybe he could get a budget. Hopefully, the owners of his club wake up and give him a budget and he can st start to try and bridge the gap yeah. to those top, team, the top two teams. But, I would have thought, listen, if he gets into the top four, it'd be a wonderful season, in my opinion. It will be. Um, and, Huge. you know, That's when, a pe when, a, when a, um, people start giving this guy some respect, I don't hear any pundit talk about this guy with any... They're not saying anything. They're not giving him any ratings whatsoever. It's just like, oh, yeah, Arsenal. Oh, yeah, and they're third at the moment. Yeah, let them. That was a decent win, but they're not giving him any props. Let them, di let them just keep talking and or not talking, shall we he say. He's so under the radar, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Let them. Let them do what they got to do at the end of the day. We know as fans what he's doing. We can mm. see it. We're the people that watch him every week. We're not the media. We don't have that bias. We can see what is actually going on. We can see... Look at. Let's look at Chelsea, right? Chelsea got a new manager in. There's clear problems there. There's clear breakdowns between players and the manager. Clear. And they had money to spend. And they've got money, right? So Chelsea's problems are worse than ours because there's a lot of rotten apples in that squad. And they have been from the Mourinho era. Too many egos, too many me, 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 me. You look at Arsenal, the only power struggle was between him and Ozil. But it looks like he's mm. come out on the other side. Clearly the players respect him. Clearly the players enjoy playing for him. I said it in last week's podcast, this is the fittest I've ever seen them look at this mm. point in a year in years. It's going to be really important as well from exactly. now till the end of the season. So a fit, strong I think team. When Pep took over at Man City, they started off the season in his first year really strong. They went for a massive dip in the middle towards the end and then picked up, got in the Champions League places, went again the following year. I feel that we're only going to benefit from this first year under Unai Emery. We might not have that dip in fitness levels next year because we're going to be used to it. I feel there was a dip mm. because they were pushed so hard and their bodies were not used to it, but it takes time. But by next year when they get pushed, there won't be such a dramatic dip. Every game there's dips and you might not play mm. great or here or there or whatever, but there won't be such a drastic dip. And also you need a bit of luck. We need luck with injuries. We ain't had none this year. And I feel that, you know, it's, it's, had, it's, it's, it's important. I if mean, we had some luck, then yeah. I feel that we'd already be in. I feel there's some vital players that need to stay fit from now to the end of the season. We're going to get into the top four. I think the strikers, massively, uh, Lacazette and Aubameyang. It's because of um, them two. We're we're they, in the they got, they've got to stay fit, right? We can't afford no injuries Burn to Leno. them two, right? Um, Leno. Um, although if Leno went out, I mean, listen, he is important, but there is a decent backup for him. Socrates. But I think if Socrates and Koscielny, those two. Mm. I wouldn't like to be going into many games with those guys missing either. Xhaka. You know, Xhaka has been playing really well. There is, I, I hear you on the Xhaka thing. There is cover for Xhaka though, in, in that you can bring but in a Torreira. We do look a little bit. Yeah, but I like Xhaka's power at the moment in that midfield. So I would like to see him. Yeah, I think he's an important player to stay fit from now to the end of the season. He Captain is. Captain material? In his cut out of mistakes. Cut out some of those mistakes, and then yeah. But he has got that within him. Yes, I like, I like, I like, look, I like you, his strength. You, I like his passion. He knows what it means for Arsenal. He, you can see it after every game. He comes over to the fans. He's a guy. He, 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 he'll lay it on the line for Arsenal. I've yeah. got no doubt in that. My and only even thing, when he's getting abuse, you just said it there, right? Even when he gets abuse from people and he's getting shouted out, uh, 
people giving him whatever when he comes over. He still comes over to the fans. Yeah. Still applauds. No, he him. lays it on the line for the he lays it on the line for Arsenal. I know Simple. I've got no doubt with that whatsoever. My only problem with Xhaka sometimes is the mistakes. It's mistakes, yeah, that's Stupid fine. Stupid mistakes. You think, why? What, what, you, come and on, look man. At the way he a guy of your to... quality. Why are you just oh, passing no, no, no. the ball you, to that look guy? Look at the there. way he reacted to Aubameyang at Spurs missing the penalty. Yeah. He was the first player that went over to yeah. him to pick his head up. First player to go on social media to say, Yeah. Pick your head up. We win yeah. together, we draw together, we lose yeah. together. We're Another a team. player. Another player that could be very important from us from now till the end of the season. He's leaving, Aaron Ramsey. Yeah. I think this guy could be another guy that could help us to get into the top four big time, right? If we we all keep these guys fit. And then if the other guys playing a little cameo in Mikaterian, I think can be really important. If he, if he keeps that form yeah. going, because he scores goals. Yeah. It will be impact guy coming in, covering for when a player drops out. Again, can be a really important player. You know, so... There's reasons to be optimistic. Of course. That we, but, but I think that first away game we against Everton is going to be big. Because I think if we if we went there to away to Everton and we won that, it'd be kind of laying down a statement to say, you so know yeah. what, we can go to these places away from home and win. And we're confident now that we can go Watford and do the same thing and Leicester and Burnley. Mm. So... Big games coming up, man. And it that's is. what I love, man. It's, it's not a dead season. It's exciting. You know what I mean? Over the past it's few exciting. years, we've come to this stage of the season. It's been dead. And we're like, maybe... Uh, well, what did I tell maybe you? Maybe a Europa League, you? but we got we, we got Madrid. Yeah, so yeah. we ain't going to get past I that. I said to you, didn't I, the other month, and when I said to you, I said that top four is our best chance. And then I said to you in one of the interviews that I don't want fourth place. I want third. Yeah, you, you did, went, yeah. third? Like, yeah. third? No, behave. It ain't going to happen, is it? Listen. He's turning into troops now. I, I told you, I told you. I'm told learning. You. you know what it is? I'm watching Troopsy's videos really. and the way he handles this guy, yeah? <laughs> and I realise that, that guy's if been... your voice is more powerful and you raise it up a level, you can actually now He raises up, up his level to bloody everything. And that guy's been so lucky in those predictions, man. It's been <laughs> getting, it's getting <laughs> annoying, man. He's the, the luck... He's been getting, you know what? He's, like he's getting last them. weekend. You see how many he got right? Yeah, I know. I couldn't believe it, man. He's literally getting them right. He, he needs could, to be oh. putting some money on that. Honestly, man. But it's the minute he does that, they're all going to just going to all, gonna all fall apart. Because I remember he's gonna get, when you was going through the uh, West Ham Huddersfield, and it wasn't you turned around and you went. It wasn't how many they're going to win. Uh, yeah. who's going to win? It was like how many they're going to win by. And when I put on Soccer Saturday. And I saw that Huddersfield were three one up. I was like, "Oh <laughs> wow!" I was like, "That's why he's gonna hammer you." Oh, for that, man. He was on my case all weekend, man. He was on my case. Mill texted me about Millwall. Texted me about oh, Newcastle. Mill, don't talk the to me about Millwall. You know they cost me <laughs> nearly five hundred pounds. I had them in my accumulator. The goalkeeper. Go and talk him. to the keeper. I was gonna tweet him, but I thought no, he's having a bad enough time as it is. Plus, I don't need none of the Millwall ultras on my, on my case. Do you know what I mean? So I was like, no, nah, no, nah, I'll allow that one. Don't but get bushwhacked. No, nah, yeah, yeah, the bushwhackers, <laughs> isn't it? That's it. But I had four teams in my accumulator and I had PSG to win at Marseille. Um, there was someone else, but the two that bumped it right up was Wolves to beat Manchester United yeah. and Millwall to beat Jeez. Brighton. So they cost it. Two and nil, obviously, two the, goals oh, in yeah, the, last obviously few the Millwall game was before Man United. So when that happened at the time, I went, oh, accumulator lost, no worries. But then when later that night, <laughs> Wolves actually won, I sat there, looked at my accumulator, nearly £500. I was like, you mug. <laughs> that one mistake in the 95th minute cost me nearly £500 on like a 20 quid bet or something. I think it was something stupid like that. It's like, you mug. And then <laughs> I see him tweet something. It got retweet on my timeline. He actually tweeted saying, I'm so sorry. And I'm gutted. And I felt like saying like, yeah, you owe me 500 quid, you mug. <laughs> but I was like, nah, 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 I'll allow him, I'll allow him. Because it happens to the best of them, doesn't it? It's, it's uh, part of football, isn't it? So. Well, listen, thanks for watching the show today. Don't forget, as I said, uh, we're going to be over there in Dubai doing a Q&A. Um, it's going to be, we you running your finger? Links in the description for things He's, and I do that. Yeah, but you always forget, so I'm just reminding. Right. Oh, what's the poll this week? Huh? Who? Oh, hold on a minute. What poll? We done a poll last week, didn't we? Did, Did we? you actually run it? What was the poll again last week? Was it because of me and troops that Abami hangs come back to form? 
<laughs> I think initially the question was who's going to sure. win. I don't think we ran it. Who's who? No, I think the original question was who's going to win the match between DTFC and AFTV FC. We already know that anyway. So we just hey, how's, your, how's your dead team going? Huh? No, don't even stop. Oh, you know what? Hold on. Before we finish Here the show, before we finish the show, I heard that it's a team that plays week in week out, and you're just putting your name to them. No, no. Is that true? No. See, man's getting shook. No, 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 no. That, that's what I heard. No, I no. heard it's a grassroots team that plays week in, no. week out. And you're just coming along and putting your name to no. it. And it's starting to work out now when no. you're saying about, oh, we train at a stadium and all this and that. No, no. If I find that out, you know. You're going to find Because then that's bogus. That's a bogus team. That means it's not your it. team then. Listen. Don't worry, man. I'm going to do let my let investigation, man. Let me just explain man. something got, to this guy, yeah? It. My players will be registered. You will be able to see them. Registered not... with, with who? With the league that we're setting up. Registered with the league that they're in? No. Because what you've got to remember I don't know, is... man. There's something dodgy going on about this thing. Let me explain because man's getting shook. Not right. Shook. There's something... I've not announced this yet, all right? But I may as well announce it now, all right? And look at him sit there with his chest out like, yeah. All right? Trials for my team are going to be coming very, very, very soon. And I will be announcing... <laughs> this week, the location, how you can get yourself involved and how you can partake <laughs> in trialing for I'll come AFT. In. I'll come in. You can come along as well and you can start. I'll come in. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be like, I'll be there like Bielsa. I'll be there like <laughs> Bielsa just, like, <laughs> with binoculars. Man's got his binoculars. <laughs> Watching. Oh, like he's, this. He's shit. But, he's shit. But oh, do you know what? <laughs> but do you know what? The best bit is he won't be able to see because that's the beauty of having a stadium. Because you Listen, ain't going to be allowed in. This team is a team that is a grassroots team already that you've just put your name to. That's what I'm hearing. Why am I holding trials if I've already got a team? Just to add a couple little men to it. No. To try and disguise it up. But I'll I've find got, out, man. Don't worry, I'll find I've out. I've got I'll find out. I'll find out. serious ballers. I'll find out. And I know who the grass is. I'll find it. Which I'd, grass? Don't right. worry, man. I've I'm got my connects. Him, I'm going to look straight down the lens. I've got my I connects, am, man. I'm going to look straight down the lens, right? And I'm not going to mention your name. Flex. Yeah? Flex. He is one of the guys that I was trying to get oh, info no, no, from me. Nothing to do me, with Flex, yeah? man. Nothing to because do with Flex. Because he's starting up his... I've got my links, his... man. I'm like Putin, bro. I'm like... I, I, uh, I'm, I'm ex-KGB, bro. You yeah? Know what I mean? I've got my peoples there. Yeah, you yeah, know yeah. What I mean? link it up. Your them. Right? And I'm that's what I'm hearing. But I've, Jamaican, you know, yeah. I've still got a few more investigations to do on it. You could do your investigations. Hopefully by the next podcast, I'll let everyone know. Well, Goldbridge, you, Goldbridge used to be a detective inspector. Why don't you get him to investigate? Well, if he's true... Well, I'll find out, mate. Trust me, Go. you have to start again. Listen, this guy you shook, cannot right? come. You cannot listen, come with a team. Let me explain. It's a grassroots team that you're They're just putting your name team. to. They're because then anyone could listen, do that. Then anyone I'm, could do that. I could do that as well. What this guy, yeah, is that we got a stadium. They've got a sports field. Just... Go sort your own team yeah, yeah. out, man. Go yeah. sort your own team get out. Get your team, you know what I mean? This is what you get you know for what I mean? sacking the best manager in your history. <laughs> 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 Done. Links in the description. Oh, links in the description. As I said, don't forget, we do that Q&A over there in Dubai at the Five um, p um, Palm Penthouse Hotel, Jamiria. It's going to be brilliant, right? 6 p.m. on Monday, right? Oh, no, Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with you today? <laughs> the link is in yeah. the description. Yes. If you want details of the event, we are gonna be it's oh gonna be brilliant. God. Make sure you check it out. Oh yeah, download to iTunes <laughs> podcasts. Right. All the links. They're all listen, the links are there, man. <laughs>